Um, this is uh, uh, then uh, be, uh, time to work hard on problem two, but I had a, a, uh, just one thing on the way home from class on Thursday that I thought I'd mention um, uh, uh, just as a corollary of our work on problem one. Suppose we had base 100 and we were trying to find uh, uh, sorted uh, squares in base 100. Can somebody give me a, an interesting example of an infinite class of sorted squares base 100? Yeah, right. Anything for base 10 is going to be sorted for base 100, except that in, in groups of two. It doesn't go the other way. You might have a, something in base 100 that was like repeated 25, 25, 25, or something like that. But, but uh, in in, uh, in particular, um, uh, there will be one in base 100 that starts out say three, and then has a whole bunch of 33s, and then has a, a 36. Um, and then a bunch of 66s, followed by a 67. And similarly with, you know, without this 36 in here, and without this 3 in there. And so this shows a, um, a class of, of uh, uh, you know, a, a, of, of things where, where you have uh, an extra digit in between the two re repeating sequences as well as an extra one in front. I mean, that just, and, and similarly we'd get base a thousand and so on so so you can see the uh, that uh, as the base gets more composite we get more chances for for these funny patterns and uh, um, it would it would be an interesting conjecture though to fix to or to, to maybe a, a doable problem to figure out what bases have no repeated patterns at all for example maybe a prime plus one um, uh, would have no repeated patterns. Who knows? But that's uh, that's just a, a final footnote for problem one. Okay, now, now <coughs> problem two. I'm not sure exactly where it's going to lead us. Of course, I never know. But uh, the, the, uh, a priori, the name of the game seems to be um, uh, something about probability and something about um, interactive. I interactiveness or whatever the, the, the noun is, interaction, in, in intership, whatever the word is. So, so, uh, so making interact, making a a, a, a program so that a, so that uh, a human uh, intuition can combine well with uh, uh, with uh, uh, co with uh, uh, some kind of statistical routines that will that will sort out hypotheses efficiently. So that the person doesn't have too much to do driving the program, but I, but a human being is really a, uh, an essential part of the loop. I I believe uh, uh, I constructed a solution to cipher number one that that uh, had only ASCII codes in it, but made absolutely no sense at all. Um, just to, just to you know, so so the, there's somehow there's one sensible solution. I think only one. Uh, very much so. Only one sensible solution to each of those ciphers. Okay, so let's uh, let's start out with probability. Uh, uh, thinking a little bit about probability, and um, and first of all, I wonder if if anyone can t let's let's look at the qu at the kinds of permutations that are represented by this this uh, f. And to make the problem simpler, let's uh, let's con let's restrict ourselves to permutations of ten elements instead of 256. So. Let's try to figure out, uh, first of all, how many um, uh, f's there are that would take the digits 0 to 9 into the digits 0 to 9 with those properties that are, that are the key to our, our um, decryption. So that says that f of f of x has to be equal to x, and f of x is unequal to x. Isn't it Sterling? Isn't it Sterling? Two five or something? Oh, which okay, Sterling? Two. <laughs> what? Which Sterling number? Square. The, this one. This with five, something like that. Right. Okay. Now this is um, this is the. Uh, uh, does anyone else know the this this notation for Sterling numbers? These are the. Uh, um, the, the square bracket Sterling numbers are um, 
represent the number of permutations with 10. This would represent the number of permutations on 10 elements that has five cycles. People know what a cycle of a permutation is. Everybody knows that, right? Don't be don't be embarrassed if you don't know the cycle of a permutation. Five cycles that have five cycles. Five cycles. Seven cycles. Yes. That means that, so, so this is the number of permutations. So for example, uh, um, let's take a simpler case, four, two, the number of permutations that have, four, that have um, two cycles, uh, the permutations would be like one, two, three, four is an example. It fixes one and takes two to three, three to four, and four to two. Uh, and then the opposite one, two, four, three. And then there's several more similar ones where two is fixed and, and one, three, four, one, four, three, and so on. And then there are, um, let's see, to get two cycles, then we also have the cases one, two, three, four, one, three, two, four, and one, four, two, three. So there's two, there's another one with two fixed, another one with three fixed, and two with four. Altogether, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And so I think the Sterling number four, two, what do you call it, four? I don't remember the, the slang for it even anymore. Um, I think we call it four bracket two or something like that is, uh, is, is 11, I guess, if I haven't missed any. Um, well, these aren't all, all of that kind of. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the, the, um, the number of pairings, so that, that would just... Yeah, be, 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 be like these pairings. are the ones we're trying to count. Yeah, so um, I guess it would be 10 factorial over um, two, 2 to the fifth divided by 5 factorial. Okay, mm -hmm. now 10, to the, 10 factorial over 2 to the fifth... Isn't it just 10 choose 2? Divided by 5 factorial is Andy's uh, yeah. uh, claim, although he might deny it. Uh, no, no. <laughs> 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 now, someone else says 10 choose 2 um, is another uh, another claim that it might be the number of, that's the number of pairs. Times 8 choose 2 times 6 choose 2 times <laughs> 10 choose 2 times 8 choose 2. Because that's just choosing how to choose two elements. So, we want yeah. pair them so let me erase this. The pairs. That's right. Okay. So, so um, another another, <laughs> another suggestion is that we first we we first choose a pair, and then we have eight elements that haven't been chosen yet, and so we we have that many ways to choose the next pair, and so on, and so on, and so on. Um, and that would give us ways of choosing pairs. Now, why do you say say that this has to do with pairs, both of you, first of all? Um, I, I mean, that, that's, I think, fairly clear, but we ought to make it on the table. Are we? I think it should be 10 choose 5 into 5 factorial. And we got another one is 10 5 times 5 factorial. Or into? What is into? Yeah. Okay, that's multiplied. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, the, um, the reason to, it's uh, pairs, because we're right. dealing with transpositions, there's two, two elements, I think. Okay, so this, so we we know that permutations can always be represented as cycles, and the, and uh, there is no one cycle because of this condition, but everything is a two cycle, and so it's got to be represented in terms of two cycles. That's the that's the thing. And now we have some competing formulas here. <laughs> um, let's try to represent these in uh, in uh, factorials and see what we get for this one. This is ten factorial over over two factorial, eight factorial. And then 8 factorial over 2 factorial, 6 factorial would be a lot of cancellation. Um, and I think I'll make it just in time here. 2 factorial, 2 factorial. And then uh, this one is 1. So, so that can, so we get everything canceling. And uh, looks like 10 factorial over 2 to the fifth, all right. But, but uh, this one is also divided by 5 factorial. This one here says 10 factorial over, I think that be over 5 factorial, but we, have a, have, we need a 2 to the... Two. So. To get the 5 factorial on the second one, you, 
you just have to bump on the number of permutations of five objects because when you pick the pairs, you could have picked them in any order. Okay, right. So I first I first pick a pair and then I ha then I pick another pair, but but uh, the same I get the same f uh, if I pick the second pair first instead of the first pair, and so there's a factor of five factorial. So this this seems to be a believable uh, number here, um, and. Um, there, and this uh, this number, by the way, is uh, is a multinomial coefficient that's sometimes written 10 um, to 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. There's a number of ways of of uh, taking 10 elements and putting them into five groups of five, uh, but that's in, that includes the order of the five groups of five. So if we if we divide by five factorial, then we then we exclude the order. Now let's see if we can apply this uh, formula to, uh, to 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 a method that would generate one of these at random. What would be a good way to to generate a random f uh, so that each of these guys is equally likely? You know, it would it, ideally it would give you also a way to to generate a random f uh, for the uh, uh, for size 256. Choose two elements. Choose two more elements. Put them in a cycle. Choose two more elements. Put them in a okay. Cycle. Choose, 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 a, choose a pair at random. Uh, how do we do that? Choose an element choose at random, two. and then um, uh, we, have to remove right? them. we have to what? Have yeah. to remove them as, as we go. Example. Okay. So so we start out and we choose a number between um, zero and nine, equally likely, and then we remove it. And we choose a second number, and uh, th that becomes the, th the thing to pair with it, right? Okay. Um, so let's see. I don't have a random number generator, but uh, let's uh, let's use the digits of pi uh, whenever we need a random number. Uh, people know pi to uh, enough places. Now I have a rhyme assisting my feeble brain, but its task. It's some time resisting. Okay. That might be enough to get, get us around around permutation. Okay. Now let's imagine writing a computer program that wants to quick generate one of these. Just this is a, a quick question. It doesn't really solve problem two, but it gets us into a little spirit of pr computer programming. So we're going to have to remove elements from the permutation as we as we as we get them. Um, uh, but we'd like to get random random uh, uh, pairing somehow. By the way, what's the difference between this and just generating a random permutation? I mean, suppose you know the first first you choose a first you choose a number between zero and nine, and then you choose then you remove it and you choose a number between you know the, the remaining nine guys, remove that and, and remaining eight guys and so on. That's that just gives us a random permutation. It's as if we we took a random permutation and then decided that the first two elements of that permutation are going to be paired together, the next two are going to be paired together, and so on. Okay, so so in a, in a way. We're saying that uh, that one way to get a random f is to is to have a random permutation is to is to imagine that we have five boxes and two two uh, uh, slots in each box and we put a random permutation in these ten slots. Then we let this be the function, and uh, and uh, the uh, the fact that we get the same function by by five per five factorial ways to re to uh, Move these boxes around, and uh, by uh, we have uh, two ways to interchange elements in each of the boxes. Again, give, giving the same function. That that's another way to prove that we've gotten um, that many f's because uh, ten factorial ways to, to to put a permutation in there, and then and then uh, two to the fifth times five factorial equivalent functions from every every such way. And that that works in general if you want to say how many ways are there to have. Uh, um, uh, a certain number of one cycle, certain number of two cycles, certain number of three cycles, and so on. Um, you you write boxes out with the with the right number of slots in it, and then you put a random permutation in those boxes. Then you uh, uh, you divide by the uh, uh, the product of the uh, you know you have factorial. Like suppose I wanted to say a one one cycles, a two two cycles. 
and so on, um, then the uh, uh, the final total is going to be um, n, uh, which is equal to n factorial. That's n is equal to um, a1 plus 2a2 plus and so on. n factorial divided by, and then um, we have um, inside of each inside of each cycle we have a cyclic permutation that we, uh, that we can do. So each cycle of length four can appear in four different equivalent ways. Um, so we have to divide by one to the a1, two to the a2, uh, and so on. And then we also have to divide by a1 factorial, a2 factorial, and so on, in order to consider interchanging different boxes. That's the generalization of this thing. But let's let's just try to com compute a random permutation now on um, on a digit zero to nine. Well, we start out with the with an array that contains zero to nine, and at the beginning we choose a random number from zero to nine, and it's three. Um, so three is our first element of our permutation. Now, what's, an, what's a convenient way to uh, uh, to remove it from the set and and continue uh, uh, generating from the remaining eight? Uh, take that and move the others over. John, take, swap with less. take it out and move the others over is one way to do it, and to swap with the last one is another way. What would be the bet? What would, what would be the winning? Way. I mean, yeah. One one idea is to is to is to go from from this to to zero one two four five six seven eight nine. Um, and that re that means that we have to move move about half the elements on the average. Yeah, it's easier to swap. It's easier to swap because we don't even need to swap. Just move the last one in on Okay. So 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 uh, well, you could put you could you could put uh, this element three off on the side. And put nine in here in place of it, and fill the hole that way. Because we don't really care that these numbers are in increasing order. It doesn't. It doesn't hurt us because we're going to. We're trying to generate a random permutation anyway. So the, the rest of the problem, we're going to get a random permutation of these remaining nine guys. There's no reason why we have to have them in any particular order. Any convenient order will 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 be as good as any. Okay. So three is the is the first element of our random permutation in this way, and then we we look for a random number between zero and eight, and it's one. So out comes one. Eight goes in here. And the next one is four. Zero, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Interesting random permutation that we're getting here. Um, I've always felt that that it, it, the most random permutation of four elements is three one four two because that's pi to to three places to three decimal. Um, now, um, uh, you know, of course, if we get a number that's too big, we we just can reject it and move on or something like that. But I've used up this one now, and that's one that would tell me to choose eight and so on. Um, Incidentally, uh, if I didn't want to keep these in a separate array, where could I put them? Yeah. At the end, I could just put them back in the at the at the end of the thing and and uh, and later on. Okay, now this process we might as well continue it out to the bitter end just to, to make clear what we, what what our great permutation is going to be: zero, one, two, three, four, five. Um, now nine. We wanted to generate a, a a random digit zero to four at this point, and we got a nine. Uh, so we could either throw it out, or we could uh, we could uh, wrap around and say that this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So let's do that it's faster. Uh, zero, one, two. Um, uh, six. Uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's okay, we'll take the zero. I have to do that. I I have to do that in some way that I'm that I'm not. Um, uh, biasing it towards low digits. Um, for example, if I was trying to get a, a random digit be zero up to five, then I wouldn't want to go past. Uh, I wouldn't want to go after five to six, seven, eight, nine because uh, I'd have no way of getting uh, the four and five again on the second cycle, on the second lap. Uh, it's, uh, but I, I you know, I've only got this source of random digits, so it's a funny situation. Uh, now. 
five is zero, one, two, three, four, five. So that would be here. So, so that's our, that's a ran this is a random permutation of uh, of ten elements, and then we 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 can say that we can make a function f out of it by by saying that three and one go together, four and eight go together, five and seven go together, two zero and six and nine. So, okay. So that's. Um, uh, idea that we have uh, that many. Uh, let's see. How, about how many is this? Uh, just for curiosity, ten factorial, about three million. Um, I think for the thirty-one million. What is what? It's I forget it. It starts with a three, but I can't remember if it's a thirty million or three million. Excuse me. Three million six hundred twenty-eight thousand. Three million six hundred and twenty-eight thousand and something divided by 32 and then times 5 factorial that one I remember is 120 so 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 so, re, so roughly speaking we got 3 times 10 to the 6 divided by 3 times 10 to the 4th and so it looks like about 100 altogether is that right uh oh at least that's what I got yeah. 945 yeah Okay, so what did I? So maybe so this. I think this must be 36 million. This must. I must be off by in in, in 10 fact 10 factorial. Let's see. Okay, 10 factorial is 30 million instead of 3 million. I don't remember anymore. Um, if you just do a lot of cancellation, it's 9 times 7 times 5 times 3, which is much easier. <laughs> oh, okay. Nine by seven by five by three. Okay, and five by seven by three, um, everybody knows is 105. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so it's it's nearly a thousand. Okay, so yeah, it's about a thousand uh, of these. And of course, for uh, uh, for 256, uh, uh, there's going to be lots and lots and lots more. Uh, but um, uh, so we can't simply try them all and and uh, uh, see which one works. Now suppose that I had a, a message, a a, um, uh, a a a ten digit message um, like three one four one five nine two. Let's take the digits we haven't looked at yet. <laughs> three five eight nine seven nine three. Um, well. It doesn't have to be pi. One, two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, this would be some kind of a random, um, a random number of times to use this function. Uh, uh, how many of the cycles actually get used? Uh, for example, this would get in, this would get mapped into by that permutation would get go into into uh, three would go to one, five to seven, seven to five. One to three, eight goes into four, nine goes into six, two goes into zero, seven goes into five. Okay, so so uh, we used this. We used three, one, four, eight, five, seven, two, zero, six, nine. Yeah, we used them all in that particular case. Uh, but. Um, uh, there, you, the, the question I wanted to raise now is, uh, if I have a random permutation of these 900 and some, um, uh, what's the what's the chance that uh, what's the chance that a particular cycle, say, would would never be used at all? So I have a particular cycle, let's call it A, B. What's the chance that I have a message in which in which A B never gets used to? It never appears at all in the uh, in the uh, in the in the encoding. Okay, um, Arif, Andy, let's try to figure out how many messages there are that don't use the the the, the cycle A B. Would it be um, the number? Well. If you take out the that if nothing uses that cycle, it means two digits can't be used. That's right. Right. So we got to we got to count how many messages are there of length ten, <laughs> let's say, that don't use A and B. So that would be just um, 
8 to the 10. Right. And then the total number of messages is 10 to the 10th. So 8, to the, 8 tenths to the 10th is the chance that a particular cycle is not used. Okay. So, um, uh, so if we, if it doesn't depend on on A or B, of course. And uh, uh, now, so, so this is the chance that a cycle is not used. Uh, and uh, uh, what's the expected number of cycles that are not used? Okay, there, uh, for every each one of these cycles. I have cert I have this probability that it's not used. Right? So now the expected number of cycles not used. And the average, if we if we average over all messages, uh, and we and we for each message we say how many cycles did you uh, di didn't you use? Uh, there will be some messages that you, you know. Okay, uh, I just want to get into the the kind of thing. What do you think, my Marianne? They're not independent probabilities, so we can't just add them. Mike says they're not. We can't add. In, we can't add non-independent probabilities when we're taking expected value. You can add the, the, the expectation states in here. Yeah, you, you can add the averages, but you can't. You can't add. You you can't uh, add other things. But but averages you you can. In other words, if the average of of two correlated events, if you know a certain event e1, and it has a certain and an average m1, and if you have another event e2, and it has its average m2, uh, even if e1 and e2 are are uh, uh, completely determine each other, uh, the average of of the of the two quantities uh, is m1 plus m2. So we so we are allowed to add when we calculate. Uh, Averages. In fact, that's the that's a that's a great simplification about averages. Why it's why people like to calculate averages. I guess it's one of the <laughs> because it's easier to calculate. Maybe the average doesn't mean anything, but it's easy to calculate and always nice to have numbers. So um, so with that clue saying then that, that the the number that the in other words if if let, let's let's justify that again in, a, in suppose you suppose we wrote out all ten to the tenth messages. And we know that eight to the tenth of them don't involve three one. Okay, so we put a check mark on those eight to the tenth guys, saying those are the, here's a psych, uh, you know, a, a check mark or a, or maybe we put a a, um, a chip on each one of those. And, uh, so if the message doesn't use three one, we we give it a chip. Uh, and so we've we've paid out eight to the tenth chips. Now um, similarly for four eight. We look at all the all of the messages that don't contain four eight, and we put chips on those. We could pay out another eight to the tenth chips, and similarly for five seven two zero six nine. How many chips have I paid out? Uh, and then I divide by ten to the tenth to get the average number of chips paid out. Uh, so, Marianne, now what do you say? But um, is, isn't there a problem because if if you check all all the ones that uh, don't use the pair three one, mm -hmm. and then check the ones that don't don't have the pair four eight. You might check again the same. Um, yeah, the I'm same I'm, I'm asking for a sim I'm asking for the average number of of things not used. I'm not asking for the total number of things not okay. used, or or I'm not saying how many are there that don't use that don't use exactly two. I'm saying on the average how many are not, uh, are unused. Um, so if some, if uh, if uh, you know, that's the same as the question is saying if I if I took all ten to the tenth messages, and I counted all chips on all those messages, divided by ten to the tenth, that's the that's the number I'm getting. I'm trying to get the average number of chips on a message. So so I know how many chips I would have paid out in the whole in the whole uh, if if I had all ten to the tenth messages I. I would pay out eight to the tenth chips for the first pair, plus eight to the tenth for the second, and so on. So I get. So so the final answer is five times five times eight eight, eight, to, eight to the tenth divided by ten to the tenth. Yeah. Okay. Now, in the, it, similarly, in our in our problem, if we have a random f. Um, 
And uh, by the way, I can assure you that I did cho choose F in exactly this kind of a way. I, I generated a random permutation, and then I decided that those would be the, 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 the two cycles. Um, if we have a random F, then how many um, cycles of F would we expect would never occur? On the average. Well, for one is like 255. Yeah, yeah. Could you say that again? Uh, 128 times. 128 is the is the number of cycles, right? Times the probability that the number of messages that that uh, don't use a particular cycle. 254. To the 256. 256. Okay, right. Now that's the average number of cycles that that we aren't going to hit it at all in the in a, in a message. That's if the message is is, is random. Random. Yeah. And if it's English text or Pascal text, it's not random. It's been uh, it's been skewed by uh, uh, by adding k, uh, um, but that's all we know, right? But yeah. also, it's been skewed by being sampled from the English language. And yeah. So. Yeah. So, so that's right. If you start out with, with, uh, with something from English text. Um, that okay. Let's let's work on the first on the assumption we have random, and then then talk about the skew from English. That's a very good point. But I want to first get this formula. Let's let's can we can we estimate what this is, without a, without a calculator? How can we? How can we figure out what is so? So anyway, we, this is a just a suppose. Uh, for example, um, this would ra this would arise in a cryptography problem in the following sense. Suppose that somebody even told you the the, the message. So, uh, somebody somebody told you what the uh, what the whole message was, but you were supposed to figure out f, because really. Um, uh, 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 the the important thing was that F had already been used to de to encode lots of other messages, um, and so we really wanted to know F so we could put put it into a machine and, and grind out the, the key to lots of other messages. But we we happened to know this this message, uh, you know, somebody screwed up and and uh, kept kept a copy of his f of his file in both in, uh, in plain form and in ciphered form, and so we and, and so we found that, and so we got a Rosetta Stone that told us. Um, uh, what the F was, but how many, uh, how much of F would would not would still not have been used uh, in this case if uh, if we assume uh, uh, that things were random, if we assume that the that the original text was random, and this is the the uh, this is the average number of cycles that haven't been used yet. Uh, but let's estimate that. Is there an easy way to calculate that? Take the two. I mean. Better. 254 is 256 <coughs> minus 2. Is right. Okay. So that's, so that's one, 1 minus 2 over 256 to the. That's 1 minus 2 to the minus 7. This is what? 1 minus 2 to the minus 7. Right. 1 minus 2 to the minus 7 yeah. raised to the two. 256. Yeah. Yeah. There's an easy, but I, fr from here I would, I would go to a. Uh, I, I would consider this to be one over two to the n raised to the n, yeah, which is when n is large, because because yeah. yeah, okay. Which is about so which is very close to e to the minus two. Right. All right. So uh, uh, now we have to know a little what e to the minus two. Anyway, so it's. It e, at least we can calculate that guy out. Um, uh, what is e? What? Is, yeah. E squared. Yeah, but I mean, so with a with a with a calculator, we could get e to the minus two, very or, or you know. So so let's let's see what that is. That's. Uh, does anybody have a calculator? E no. What? E squared is about one point five. It's, a, it's about seven point seven and a half for e squared. Okay, so uh, so that's uh, ten uh, three fourths times ten. So now we got uh, three fortieths. So it's forty thirds. It's about thirty. 
You want to take 128 over 7.5. 128. Or, yeah. yeah, right. Um, so, well, let, let me just, yeah, so 128 over 7.5, huh? mm -hmm. which is which is three-fourths of 10, if that helps any. So that's uh, 250, whatever. So that's about 80, no, 256, 25 over 3. It's about 8, huh? So, so, so 128 e, e squared is, is, is more like, more or less 8 or something like that. But what are you saying? Mm -hmm. No? 16? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, it's about 16. Okay, okay. Right. okay sorry. So, so, we've got 16. Uh, roughly 16 of the pairs won't be exercised in, a, in, in the message uh, on the average. If, 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 what? 17? <laughs> Even 17, I think. Okay. Yeah. In actuality, yeah, that uh, that number is much too small for the text that we would give it. Uh -huh. We found that only I think 110 of the pairs were used in the, in the second message, and uh -huh. actually I didn't make a count for the first message. 110 out of 128 is all but 18. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. oh there's 128 pairs, and and uh, so this. Oh right. Okay. Right. So that is about right. Okay. And uh, but uh, you, but that's a good point. We have we have the messages. We know exactly how many pairs are actually used in those messages. Um, no, you don't. You have to decode it. Then you know. Oh. Oh, you've decoded it. Yeah. Uh huh. Well. Okay. <laughs> Anybody doesn't have a partner yet. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, so now in the Okay, so let's see. Yeah, you say we don't know uh, and, uh, how many pairs that have been used, in, of course, until we've decoded. That's right. We we only know how many different uh, uh, how, how many different values of of uh, uh, like instead of working with pairs, we know how many of these these guys have actually been there. Like three or one, we would know if it was used, but we wouldn't know if three and one are in a, are in a uh, the same pair, yeah. Okay, so so um, uh, at least by this argument, if we had if we had all the plain text and if we had a random situation, we would expect uh, to get a hundred, uh, uh, roughly 111 out of the 128 pairs on the average. Now, um, uh, let's let's see. You raised the question about what if we start out with some with some very biased uh, messages. Um, uh, but the but the but the f was chosen at random, but the messages were were non-random. Um, so in this case, we we consider the uh, uh, a particular message, let's say only one message, um, but we choose f at random, and then we ask the, the same question: how much, how many of the pairs of f would not be used at all in this message? Um, is that is there any meaning to that? If the message is all the same character repeated. Yeah. Okay. So the message, if the message is is uh, is very, uh, uh, if the message consists of all zeros, then um, uh, th we get quite a different answer than if the message is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right. So what really is involved here is the uh, is that um, we if we, we have to know how many digits how many different digits there are in the message and if we know how many different digits there are in the message then we can determine how many uh, what the chances are of the uh, uh, that, that we're going to hit that part that much of the of the uh, f function um, and uh, so so you can you could look at at the messages that we have in in problem in in problem two, and uh, uh, figure something like that, that out. So let's 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 uh, let's suppose we take the second cipher text. Um, does anybody have a copy of it here? Mm -hmm, thanks. 
No. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what I'll write... Okay, now how can we figure out how many different uh, values of f have been used? Uh, in other words, the ciphertext starts out 102, 198, 003, and it ends up with 185. Uh, now, now, if we're going to convert this into plain text, we have to add add k to c sub k and apply f, and then um, and then subtract k. Now, in, uh, but we, but uh, how many different uh, values of x? For how many different values of x is f of x going to be calculated? Well, we find that by adding. By, by, by changing this, uh, uh, you know, this is still 102, but this one it goes to 199. This one goes to 005, and the last one will go to 184. So if we look at that, at that form of the, of the numbers, uh, and then that'll tell us how many different x's there are that, for which f of x uh, is relevant in this problem. Um, now, if that, that's, so that's not going to be, 256 probably it's going to be something like uh, uh, well 256 times e inverse will probably we'll lose about that many of them so it's about one tenth huh a little less than one tenth about one uh, we lose about nine nine guys no oh, two seven oh wait that's no one thirty I mean it's, we lose uh, roughly that divided by 2.7, so looks like uh, maybe 90 or something like that. So there'll be 100 and 170 whatever of these uh, of these different numbers here for which f is um, going to be calculated. Now, if f has been chosen at random, then we could work out how many of the of the of those um, functions. Um, uh, how, how many uh, of them uh, avoid a particular pair in, in F. So let's just, that won't take long, let's just finish it. Suppose there were, suppose there were M different things there. Say M is, a, think of M as about 170 or something like that. There are M different things here, and uh, we wanted to, to, to count how many of the functions F uh, uh, for a particular random cycle, A, a B, how many um, of the F's, um, uh, wait a minute, if A, B either has, bo has both of its elements in there or, not, or none of its elements in there, uh, yeah, we could work this out, but I'm not sure it would lead us anywhere for the problem, too, so, so unless it's real easy, I don't want to. I don't want to pursue it. Um, now, I guess the main the main point here is that is that um, uh, w if we do need to estimate the success of some kind of an attack, then then probability theory comes in and and uh, uh, but I, but there are infinitely many questions of probability that we could ask and and uh, we should probably restrict ourselves to the ones that relate most closely to our our problem. So, so I think um, anyway uh, we can as we can assume it'll be reasonably close to, to re reasonable to say that th there's a fairly substantial part of F we'll not know at all, uh, uh, but we'll know most of F and and, and um, any any kind of a method that 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 relies on on. Uh, Something that where f is almost all known is something that that's sort of out of the question for this problem. Uh, as w one of the things I guess to mention is that the the messages we have are 256 bytes long. That's not really an extremely long message uh, 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 with with a code of this kind. Uh, um, of course, files tend to be a lot longer than that. 256 might seem large in some sense, but it was pretty hard for me to write a Pascal program that was only 256 bytes long and it did anything interesting at all because uh, uh, already you write the word program 
and I left parenthesis, and <laughs> um, and uh, you've used up eight eight bytes already, and so you you know you got uh, uh, you got to say begin and end and a few other things, and pretty soon you're you're out of you're out of space. So um, uh, yeah, it's a fairly short message in a sense. Um, now we can look at our messages though, and and only the C K plus K is ever relevant in the problem. So um, although C K plus K appears in the computer file, uh, I don't see in our programs why there's any reason to keep C K anywhere in the, in memory because we, we're going to adding K to it every time we every time we look at it. So why not add K once and for all and and get that over with? Okay. Um, on Thursday, Mike mentioned that the word program had this very interesting characteristic. Um, Uh, that um, if you if you add um, to every letter, uh, so you get p plus zero, r plus one, and so on. Um, m is equal to r minus five, and so and so and so these two values will will lead under encipherment to the same uh, to the same thing. Um, I, I guess the Unix hackers know that there's another <coughs> word. Uh, in C programs, that that has this, that has this property. Does anybody that include? Um, if uh, if you have a C program that's been enciphered, and and uh, you with this with this kind of method, uh, and it has a lot of include statements near the beginning of the program, then um, uh, let's see what what happens there. N L. What did you say, John? I D. So that's nine eight seven six five four. Yep. Um, so D and E go the wrong way. Uh, yeah, but there are actually two of these of these uh, 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 things in in the word include. No. The word output. The word output has. Two of these things. Ut appears twice. Oh, ut, ut, huh? Right line is also. Right, right line also right. has. Uh, right line? Wow. This is a procedure. String. You say right line has it? String has it. String? <laughs> this is, this is, uh, this is, is there anything that doesn't? Actually, I tried it on the English dictionary and half the words had it. Half the words <laughs> in the. In in, 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 in the Unix English dictionary, had some kind of a uh, thing like this. Well, that is. It, it, can we account for that on some on some probabilistic grounds? Oh, I see. So half of the words. You tend to get it happening a lot in morphological components. I N G. I N G. You mean uh, right there, and ED has it, huh? Oh, I see. Like the Anglo-Saxons planned. <laughs> it must be. Oh, OK. This could be easily broken. What if, um, what if we took, uh, what if we had just random uh, text uh, with, uh, with a 26-letter alphabet, with their N, 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 and we, we took a, a, a five-letter word, or you know, maybe a seven-letter word? Six. We got longer words here. String. Six-letter word on a 26-letter alphabet. Um, what would be the chances that we would that we would find um, uh, uh, no hits at all? Let's say. Well, let's see. That's a, that's a correlated thing. So let's just take the average. Let's say the average number of hits in a uh, six-letter word on a 26-letter alphabet. Work that out. <coughs> So, um, so what's the chance of a hit between between letters one and two? 
On 26. Uh, and if you get a wrap around alphabet. Yeah, well, Unless we have a wrap yeah. around alphabet, yeah. So let's look. No, it's not wrapping around, is it? So, so we get we get one change. So, um, uh, if the so if this first word, if this first letter is, uh, if, if, you know, if it's if it's uh, A B, where these are are variables that stand for letters, it's called X Y. I don't know. Um, maybe we ought to use numbers to see if we're going to take the. You know, we always, uh, when I was a student, we always used to wonder what was the limit of one as one approaches two. You know, uh, um, um, what Greek letters? That's it. Alpha, beta. Good, good point. Okay, so alpha, beta. Um, now, if um, uh, if we know alpha, then there are 20. There are uh, uh, then then uh, what's the chance that beta is equal to alpha plus one? And the and the answer is uh, um, that it's either it's either one out of 26 or zero out of 26, depending on whether this, we got a z here or not. Right. And so, uh, but uh, it's sort of um, um, so it's 25. Uh, so let's see. The chance of a hit is one out of 26, uh, but it's actually uh, one out of 26 times 25 plus zero out of 26 times in the other case, right? And so the total is 25 over. We get divided by 26. So 25 over 26 squared is the is the act, exact probability that that uh, two uh, the first two words <coughs> will will have it. And for anything that's one apart. And for anything that's two apart, it's similar, but we put a 24 there. Why are you not using wraparound? Oh, why am I not using wraparound? Because in in our problem, uh, we would we would assume that the uh, that the 26 letters that are used in our text, uh, uh, the the next the, the next letter after it is uh, like you know if you have Z. Um, then, then uh, the, your chance of, of getting, if, if you have a word that starts with Z, your chance of finding a, uh, a hit with that and something else is nil in our, in our problem. Oh, why am I not using wraparound? Because in in our problem, uh, we would we would assume that the uh, that the 26 letters that are used in our text, uh, uh, the, the next the, the next letter after it is uh, like you know if you have Z, um, then then uh, the, your chance of, of getting if, if you have a word that starts with Z, your chance of finding a uh, a hit with that and something else is nil in our in our problem. Z Y match. Yeah, we're, I'm, I was, yeah, I'm going back. Yeah, right. Yeah, if you got an A, then then uh, uh, we can't do anything with it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I should I should subtract instead. Yeah. And so, uh, because the, the the you know a minus one is a left string quote, and uh, it might be in a message, but um, I'm assuming that uh, that we have only letters in this thing. So so for this for this purpose though, uh, uh, the letters only six long. Um, uh, One twenty six is a fairly good is a fairly good uh, estimate of that probability, and uh, and it goes in the worst case where you have something that are five apart. To uh, that would go down to 20 over 26. It's not, it's I mean, of one. So it's it's close enough. So so uh, um, then if we have a six-letter word, then we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen uh, potential for this kind of a coincidence, and about one twenty-sixth uh, in each. Uh, uh, in each, uh, which which would say that on the average we would expect to have um, half uh, half a chance of uh, of of a hit. Um, and so uh, Andy's uh, uh, observation that uh, the English dictionary showed 
about half of all of all words uh, would have this in it. Uh, is is fairly consistent with randomness as well as the the fact that eds and ings are are common suffixes. That's not. <laughs> that's a that's a. Yeah, I've always uh, yeah. There's a there's a big need for for a dictionary that has all the uh, variant forms in it. Uh, if you're going to do computer games with, uh, uh, for almost all computer applications, we we uh, we want such dictionaries. And uh, um, our former student Frank Liang spent uh, several months of time preparing for his thesis by by painstakingly putting in all these variant forms by hand. And and uh, I. I remember the first time I ran across this. I, uh, <clears throat> I, I was. Let's see. I wanted to get a, a complete list of uh, of uh, five-letter words, and uh, my my first thought was, okay, uh, to get the. Uh, I if I had the the uh, words um, in a dictionary without the variant forms, uh, well, I could. Look for all the four-letter words and add s to get plurals and and uh, verbs with uh, that end with s, um, and that would that would get me that would get me the vast majority of these things. And so I started out in, in, uh, looking at the at the list of five-letter words with this and with this uh, uh, hypothesis in mind. And the, right at the very beginning, on the first page, I come to the word abacai. Which is a counterexample. There's the plural of. <laughs> you need the plural of a six-letter word in order to get a five-letter word. <laughs> uh, and it was right at the beginning of the dictionary, so so I I realized that I needed another another method to get those. Um, well, <clears throat> well, let's hope somebody gives us more complete dictionaries someday. Now that the. the uh, um, uh, um, uh, I think the let's see what's the next question I should ask. Maybe I should ask you, but I think the next question I'd like to ask is: Suppose I were just looking at a one letter, uh, uh, one letter in a in, in a cryptogram, and see if and, and try to see if there's a chance that we could even rule, uh, you know, uh, rule out um, uh, one. One character. Suppose that I just take a place at random in my message, and I say, "Is it possible um, that um, that p uh, 20 is equal to the letter a?" And and uh, I took 20 and a at, at random here. But I just want to I want to say now uh, uh, we might be able to rule. There's a chance that we might be able to rule this out. Without knowing very much about um, uh, about the problem, except that we that that uh, uh, ASCII code is involved in this function f is a is a uh, uh, product of two cycles. So let's 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 just look at that. Suppose that I have a one letter a one letter uh, crib, I guess is what it's called, or a probable word of one letter, and a place, and, and I ask for a specific place. Could that letter go in that specific place? Well, what would that imply? That would mean that f of, oh, let's see, a is um, 97. 97. Okay, and so, so that would that would say that f of 117 is equal to um, uh, uh, whatever it is, some number, right? Um, let's take uh, cryptogram number two. One, two, three. How did I do this? 16 in a line, so that's 67, 18, 90, 20 is 175 plus 20 is 195. So, I mean, the exact numbers don't matter, but that let's suppose. Uh, so, so suppose I suppose I would assume that f of 117 is 195. Can I can I try to get any any um, uh, well, you, any other consequences of this that might lead to a contradiction? Yeah. Okay, Anil. Uh, well, that gives you that that pair 117, 195. It must be a cycle. Okay, so that says, for example, f of 195 equals 117. Right. Well, you can go through the rest of your message 
and why that. Okay, so now we've got um, our ciphertext uh, uh, C K plus K, which would start it out. I had it erased here, but it was zero zero. Oh, 102, 191, 199, and so on. Well, I, I, I took the other one. No, which one had I written on the board? I, I guess I took the second one. Yeah, 102, 199, and so on. Um, and uh, ending with uh, 184. And now here we found then um, uh, 195 in this, in this part, in position 20. And, uh, okay, so we imagine that we have that all out in the computer, and now... You apply whatever you know about that. In this case, just this pair. Just this pair. Uh, right. So every one. time we get a 117 or a 195 sitting in there, uh, then I know the other, uh, the, the, the other guy. So if there's a 117 over there, then we know that this has to be 195 minus whatever in the plain text. Here, I, here I've already assumed that this goes to... 117 minus 20, which is equal to A. So there's a possibility that some, in some other position you will get, um, you'll be able to apply the function F, mm -hmm. you'll subtract its position off to get the plain text character, and mm -hmm. find that the plain text character isn't one of our legal characters. That's right. So the chance of it being, uh, uh, the chance of it not being legal, well, let's see, how many legal are there? Less than 100. So 94 plus 94 visible characters in the space, and yeah, so it's 98, 97, no, 98, I think. 98, okay. Yeah, because the space and four and three others is. Uh, so you've got 98 characters, unless you believe me when I say there aren't any right braces, right curly braces in there. Uh, let's uh, let's not use that fact. <laughs> uh, so so. Um, uh, so we get uh, something like ni okay, 98 out of 256. It's uh, a 40% uh, chance of uh, uh, that uh, uh, that it'll be legal. If, if there's another 117 in here, we'll, we have a, f a fairly good chance of uh, 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 you know 60% of the time. Uh, if there's another one in there, 60% of the time uh, it'll be illegal. Uh, if this was if this was a bad if this was a bad uh, uh, assumption. Okay, so what's the chance that some of these other words that some of these other positions are going to have 195 or 117 in them? Similar to the problems we've already been doing, so we're good at these by now. So. Uh, so uh, we got 255 new, new, new positions, and uh, each one of them, we got a chance of uh, uh, the, the chance that it's that it's uh, uh, so, so so let's say there's there's no hits at all. Um, that um, uh, that means that in all of those 255 places, we have we have somehow stuck to 254 out of 256 of the of the valid of the uh, possible codes. If we're not using 117, 195 anywhere in here, that means that this is has gone on, and we know that this is approximately uh, uh, e to the minus two. So, so um, uh, that's that that's uh, one seventh, you know, fourteen percent. So, so. Uh, um, <clears throat> Fairly small. So in the other 85% of the cases, then we get a then we get a 60% uh, chance of ruling something out, and and it might even occur twice. In which case we have we have a better you know still a better chance of ruling something out. Okay. You can do the same thing with uh, strings of characters. Okay. And consistency of just within the string. So. That's it. so you were so uh, uh, consistency within a string. Now, what do you mean by that? If you have uh, if you have a whole string of characters mm -hmm. that you want like to write down, in other words, p twenty equals a, p twenty one equals equals uh, g, something like that. Right. Then uh, it's possible that within this string, uh, two two of the characters 
may necessitate that uh, the mapping be different for, to get the two characters in those positions. Mm -hmm. uh, well, so, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not sure if we, like. For example, uh, in the word program, yeah. Okay. Uh, because because the R and the M use the same map. If, uh, then we th then we've got a real strong condition. Yeah. Right. But let's suppose that we don't have such a case. That's why. I, so I, yeah, that's what I. So we we know that uh, that it, that if we got a if we got a uh, two two Fs in the same word, then we then we're bound. Then then uh, we've got a, a real strong uh, 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 connection because these uh, uh, these things have to. Have to correspond. Um, you might have one of the other ones. Right. right. F of 117 is 195. So you might have a 195 somewhere else in the string. Okay. There no, might I be a 195 somewhere else here. I mean, okay. If, yeah. you're, if you're starting out with a 195 and a 170, basically mm -hmm. you have 117 and 195 in the same string, which you're looking for. In the same word. In the same word, yeah. Then we would, then we would get. Uh, uh, another case, for example, that that a one if, if the, possibly a one seventeen would also be in the word. That's a different kind of a pattern than the right. than the one ninety. Then in other words, uh, because we we're, we're using the the bottom one instead of the top one yeah. in order to get a in, in order to propagate uh, information. Right. So um, uh, now um, what I was trying to do is push this to from from a special case is um, uh, is is uh, is every method that we're going to think of is it all uh, are, are there going to be ten different tricks or is there sort of one very general trick of which of which we're seeing we're seeing some instances of it um, and uh, and uh, the most powerful thing occurs when we have uh, w when we uh, uh, like if we had a if we had a case where there were two 195s in a row, and we would, I mean, we would we would know that it had to be a certain, a certain pattern right away from the uh, things like in the word program. However, uh, it looks like we have some. We let's see. Are there any other deductions we can make, Mike? One very useful thing that can happen is in the second one you get the code 184 appearing two places very far apart. You say there's a 184 at the end. There's a 184 at the end and also at character number 138. So there's a 184 sitting here. Mm -hmm. And 138 and 255 are so far apart that in fact there's only one possibility. Oh wait. That could not do. So what that's in what are you saying that this is this is in position 138 here, and this is in position 255, right. and they both have had a 184. Right. Okay, so now um, uh, that these these are going to have um, uh, some p sub k plus k, and this is going to have a p sub k. This is going to be a p sub 138 plus 138, and this is a p sub 255 plus 255. And uh, so the difference between these codes um, is 120, 117. And there's only two characters in our set. And the ASCII character set, uh, and, and and so we got to find two two legal characters that are 117 apart. And so this force is under, under wrap around. Under wrap around. 117 or 130. Yeah. So they're so um, uh, okay. So if they're since the legal codes are all less than 128, if they're less than 117 apart, they both it has to be a small one with a with a big one. The largest code is 126, and uh, subtract 117 from that, you get nine. Which is just too small to be a one key. So in fact, it has to be a null. So it has to be a null. So so it tells you. That, uh, that so that that's another kind of a observation, and that uh, that uh, this would, would that this uh, is forced to be a uh, 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 this one is forced to be an uh, that's a lowercase u a u huh? <laughs> okay and this is a null.
according to, according to that observation. Now, <clears throat> um, okay, so that, now, now the, the, uh, uh, the idea that was just brought up is, is uh, seems to me maybe a different flavor from, the, from this idea of propagating uh, the values there. How would we formulate that um, in general? Uh, I suppose if you could think of it this way, or maybe somebody else wants to wants to, to do this. Uh, uh, that is, we've got these numbers: 102, 197, isn't it? 199, sorry, and so on. And so what we have is a we we can make a chart. Uh, I'm not sure this is a good idea, but since it's conceivable, where we, we would we would uh, go zero to 255, um, and then we have uh, and, and here we try to, to 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 say f of zero, f of one, up to f of 255, um, and then in here we say is it possible or not? What are the possible values of these of these codes? And um, uh, for and what you what for example here when we have f of two of uh, of one eighty four um, the possible values of f of one eighty four have to be um, ASCII code plus one hundred and thirty eight and so the possible so. Uh, uh, let's see if I put in um, X's for for values that can't occur. Uh, none of these can occur until I get to 138 is okay. So 137 is no good. 138 is okay, um, right? And then 148 is okay. Is that right? Or something like that. 147 is no good. So we have some X's here, and then and then there's a there's a, a large large region of okay values. But but most of them are. Um, uh, you know, uh, only 40% of them survive uh, because of because of this test. Then, when we when we combine it with this test, and we say that it also has to be an ASCII code plus 255, we we get to throw in lots more X's in this in this row, and we find out that uh, in fact uh, uh, there's only one. There's, there's, you know, X's are everywhere except in one in one position. Right. Okay. So, so uh, uh, this way says then that if we if we have a t if, we, if we have a table of of, uh, of of possible values of f, we can um, <coughs> uh, exclude lots of uh, lots of them, and then maybe there's only going to be one left. And here was a case where we were able to fo to 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 force it. Now, <clears throat> um, uh, so that's a, that's a, a, a forcing by exhaustion principle, uh, which which combines with the other principle that we were using, sort of by going going in, by implications, but not by exhaustion. I mean, one of the one of the uh, uh, the, somehow this, these these are these are uh, uh, two two uh, I think uh, sort of have to be sort of de definitely different uh, ideas. One is a uh, is a lower bound uh, kind of argument, and the other is an upper bound kind of argument, or something like that. Uh, the uh, uh, um, and and uh, there probably are some ev some more powerful things in here now because. If we know that this is a U, let me see. Another thing that you know is that that table has to be symmetrical along the diagonal. This table has to be symmetrical along the diagonal because if something can be F something, then you can. I mean, you've got the fact that. Okay. Which is what did a column as well. Okay, so you're saying that if F of 184. Could be um, 138. Then a f of 138 could be 184, and so so you get to you get to block out the uh, uh, the things the other way too. All right.
Okay, so uh, well, we're near the um, the end of today, and uh, uh, I think that so, some experience in programming would be valuable to go to go next. And one of the so the I guess the issues to think about between today and Thursday that at least strike me are well. Uh, how to add interaction to this? Uh, what ki what kinds of uh, of uh, uh, support do we want to provide to a man sitting there in the terminal, saying, uh, uh, asking questions? What kind of questions do we want to be able to answer? Um, uh, and what uh, w what kind of mechanisms are we going to need for updating our data structures that we use to answer those questions? So that's the that's the uh, the main the main thing sitting there. So, uh, 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 and if everybody comes knowing the the code by Thursday, then we'll we'll uh, discuss the answer, but other uh, to the code. But otherwise, we'll wait until everybody's got it because I don't want to take that uh, that out of it. Uh, no, he comes uh, he comes a week from Thursday, the 31st, I believe. Yeah. So so uh, <clears throat> yeah. So t so uh, let's think ne now. Uh, next thing about uh, the kinds of data structures to have in the program and how they could be uh, uh, updated with, with respect to interaction. I guess that's the <laughs> that's the next thing. Any, but does anyone else have anything to add? Uh, right now? You got partners for this one? Try to what? Good? No. No, no, not yet. There are no rules you have. Okay. Well, let's. Uh, yeah. Look. Look. Uh, uh, I found it difficult ever cooperating with other people. I know. You know. You never trust anybody but yourself. Uh, however. Um, I trust in you. What? <laughs> you, you think so? Trust the person with the answer. Well, no. I think the uh, the the. You know. It doesn't mean that uh, that uh, that. You, that you don't get to do any of the fun programming yourself, but uh, but the but the, but uh, just, uh, just looking at each other's program, looking at, uh, talking about ideas and so on, combining two the two sets of ideas makes it um, makes it better. But also, uh, um, I think there's some kind of uh, excitement about uh, about do, okay, some things you have to do alone. I I know that there's been some people in my life that I could. That I could work with in the same room at the same time, and we could both continue getting good ideas. Others, we would we would talk to each other, and then we'd all go away for a few hours and come back again and say, hey, "Now look at this." And and uh, uh, no, there's no general pattern, but uh, I I really think uh, uh, cooperation is is a, is a good thing to to do. So try to find a partner by Thursday. Okay, see you then.